Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. Today I'm in our technical lab at our UK hub in Chatterton, Manchester. Okay, let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at how you would add a, an exit button to the Axis i8016LVE IP video intercom. We're going to look at the electrical connections, how you connect the exit button to the inputs of the intercom. We're going to look at the uh, rules you need to create within the software to, to enable that button to work. Also, a quick look at um, connecting the maglock to the intercom and how you power it up. Wiring for the intercom is pretty straightforward. It's all PoE. As you can see on my example here, um, the handset and the door station are both PoE powered. Let's have a, a look at the wiring for the exit button. You can see, even though the intercom is PoE powered, we're just going to connect to the I.O. ports, ground and I.O. 1, from the intercom to the normally open inputs on the exit button. I'm using the AV Pro, the W box um, exit button here. So the normally open contacts and that are both green, they're the green wires. So I've connected that to common and IO1. Uh, and, th and that's the rule we're going to work on. If you were connecting a maglock to this, you would connect, the maglock would require its own separate power supply, one amp, and the magnet is wired through the common and the normally open, normally closed contact. In the configuration of the software, you can dictate what the output is, whether it's normally open or normally closed, fail secure or fail safe. But from the, from the wiring point of view, you simply break the positive uh, the power source to the magnet um, to open it, and it, you know, with, with it being a closed contact, it will send power constantly to the maglock. Right, with that in mind, let's go to the software and um, get the thing programmed up. Okay, let's log in. Um, if if you're just doing work on it or existing work on it, you'd know the address. If not, you can get the IP utility from the Axis website, find the device, and just double click it'll take you to the um, to the device in question. Okay, so let's go to settings and events. Now I've already set this system up, and you can see that in previous videos. You can see there's one of my existing rules unlock. We're going to add a new rule to enable the exit button. So add a rule, give it a name, we'll call it RTE. It's always available. Uh, scroll down a bit. Select a condition. What's going to create this rule? What's going to trigger the rule? So it's going to, we're going to use the input, input one. So if we scroll down to inputs and outputs, IO, inputs, outputs, the digital input is active. Use this condition as a trigger. Um, what is the input? Would be input one. Scroll down a bit more. And the action. If input one is activated, what's the result? And the result will be we're going to toggle the IO once. Which port, which output? Relay one. And for how long? We'll put that as, as you remember in the other videos. I normally say four or five seconds. Let's make it five seconds. So it matches the lock time. Um, click save. And if you're going to use an exit button, you might be using it with a mag lock. Now, if you remember on the inputs and outputs, there's only two outputs for the lock. And the standard, it's normally closed. If we need to change that to normally open because you're going to be using a, sec a separate power supply um, to a mag lock or a solenoid belt or, or whatever, need a normally open output, uh, sorry, normally closed output. You can change that. Go to settings, again, scroll down to accessories. These are your port, your port outputs. Just scroll down port four, which is relay one. It's normal state there, as you can see, it's normally open. If you change it to normally closed, it, the output's now normally closed. So you could run a mag lock, a fail safe device through that relay and the circuit will be broken when you um, make a valid exit or um, release request from the handset. Install to rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. 
Any AHP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and projects teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.